Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at the fifth component of internal control, which is monitoring. In the prior session, we looked at control environment, which is the attitude of top management, shareholders, board of directors, and senior executives about the internal control. Risk assessment, how the company assess their own risk in terms of monitoring the risk. Three, control activities, what activities, what steps, what policies and procedures the company undertake to make sure their internal controls are working properly. In the prior session, we looked at information and communication. And in this session, we will end up discussing the last component, which is monitoring. You might be saying, Professor Farhad, but we already looked at monitoring. Not really. We looked at independent audits of performance, which was part of the control activities, which is part of reviewing and monitoring the activities. But in this session, we're looking at a monitoring from an overall perspective, not only for certain activities for the company overall. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So what is monitoring? These are activities that involve regular evaluation of internal control quality by management to ascertain, to make sure that control functions as planned and are adjusted as necessary. So what we're doing is we're going back and looking at our control activities and determine whether they are functioning as plans as we intend them to function and if we need to make any necessary adjustments. The question becomes, how do we know? What are the sources of these activities? How do we know that things are working as expected or are not? Well, the first group that's going to help us is our internal control department. Well, we have st those are staff who are independent of both operating the business and accounting and those are called the internal auditors report and if you remember when we looked at the control environment which is the first component of the internal control we said part of the control environment is how seriously the board of directors takes into account the role of the internal auditors because the internal auditors they play a critical role in making sure the company is running as smoothly as possible by following the rules, the company rules, the regulations, laws, uh, not committing fraud, so on and so forth. Also, we could look at exception report on, uh, on certain control activities. Remember, under control activities, the control activities should alert us for anything that's unusual, such as sales exceeding the limit. So, for example, if someone tried to place a sale for a customer on credit and the sale exceeds the limit, it should generate what we call an exception report and it should tell us this is what's going on adding a new vendor for example if someone is trying to add a new vendor we have to have certain controls that if someone is trying to add a new vendor it will alert us how let's think about the following let's assume we are looking at this number one three six two let me see three so so this number, what, what is special about this number? You might be saying nothing special, it's five digit number. Well, this number is the numbers that we assign for, for our new vendors. What do you know about it? You don't know anything about it, but here's what's gonna happen. If you take one plus three plus six plus two plus two plus three, so let's add them four, 10, two, five, 15, it should total to 15. Now, our purchasing orders, People who are operating the business don't know that if you want to add a new vendor, the system only generate num account numbers with digits that add to 15. We don't tell the purchasing people this because if, if we do, they might add a new vendor and making sure it's a 15, it add up to 15. So those are some techniques, what we call them exception report, that's going to alert us that someone trying to add a vendor that is not in compliance. So we look at exception report in form of monitoring. What are some additional monitoring tool? Budget reviews. We look at variances, whether sales was more than expected, less than expected, expenditure, more or less, our material expense, more or less, our labor, 
hourly rate, so on and so forth. We could, we could look at report by regulators. For example, if we are a banking agency, we're going to have uh, uh, regulatory agencies from the government reviewing our numbers. Quality control, if we are in the manufacturing, ISO 8000, ISO 9000. And the most important one is get feedback from people who are working with the company and make sure you listen to them. Make sure you give them an 800 number that they can call anonymously. We also can take a look at complaint from customers about billing charges and quality product quality you know how do we do this how do we monitor this if we're a food company look at yelp travel company hotel company travelocity have a place where customers can review our product on the website google review facebook review better business bureaus these are all monitoring tools that that's going to do what that's going to help us make sure our company is running properly the quality is good nothing is unusual going on within the company Let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from Farhat where you can find more of Farhat lectures and see if we can answer this question. And this question deals with internal control over, over, over all. Which of the following are the two key concepts, are the two key concepts underlying management design and implementation of internal control? There are two key concepts that basically that that underline the management design. So when when the, when the company designed their internal control and they implement internal control, they keep those two in mind. Okay, let's start at the bottom. D, materiality and collusion. Do they take into account collusion? I would say yes. They want to make sure collusion don't happen. They will try their best. But materiality, materiality means what? It means something we can ignore because it's not large enough well we cannot apply materiality when it comes to control now we do cost benefit relationship if it costs too much and the benefit is small we might take the risk but we don't look at it from a materiality it's not important cost benefit is different than materiality so the answer is not the they do, they may take a look into collusion make sure they can they try to um avoid uh letting letting uh, employees collude but that's not the underlying uh, the underlying concept management override of controls is that important absolutely important Measure, ma management override of control it's similar to collusion but this is same thing management overriding or management colluding with each other that's true do they do they want absolute assurance is this an underlying concept we don't we cannot promise absolute assurance therefore c is incorrect b B is by default is incorrect because it involves materiality and absolute assurance, which we already covered those. Those are out. By, by process of elimination, A is the answer, but let's make sure we understand why A is the answer. When we design internal control, we want to provide, we can only provide reasonable assurance, not, not absolute assurance. And we have to keep in mind that there are, that are inherent limitation. Inherent limitation, would, could, which could include management override of control, and collusion and that's why those two the word i said they are correct but when we combine them with the other ones they, they don't become correct so reasonable assurance and inherent limitation are two key underlying management concept when it comes to designing and implementing the internal control at this point we covered all five component of the internal control we want to make sure we understand the five components of internal control let's review them real quick control Environment, which is the people on the top, their tone, risk assessment, how the company assess their own risk, control activities, what do they do to protect their assets and making sure the company is running efficiently and effectively, information and communication, and in this session we looked at the last session monitoring. Go to Farhat Lectures, work MCQs, look at additional resources that's going to help you understand this important concept, the internal control framework of COSO. Good luck. Study hard whether you are a CPE exam candidate, accounting student, and stay safe.